Hi, my name is Matthäus. Um, I'm working for a Berlin-based um, agency uh, here in, um, yeah, in Kreuzberg. We're in one of the startup spots here in Berlin. Uh, we are an agency uh, focused on, on search, so we do consultancy service for all searches um, all over the world. So we are doing a lot of uh, Google optimization, App Store optimization, Amazon optimization. So everywhere where you have to re-engineer a specific search algorithm. And uh, today I want to share you our insights, what, uh, what we've learned the last two or three years on App Store optimization, what you should uh, take in consideration when uh, you, you publish a new app, what's it's working, what the main criteria are, and first I would like to start, what are the targets of App Store optimization? So the main target is definitely to increase the average downloads per day to make sure you got more visibility, you got discovered by, by the search for generic search phrases, not just for brand search phrases. For brand search phrases, it's really easy to optimize. But our main focus is really to optimize for keywords where the potential users still not knowing which app they want to download. And um, next to this, you can also try to optimize your app descrip description page for the organic um, desktop search. So this is something we also use, not just to get traffic by the app stores on the smartphone, but also to get um, rankings and traffic from a desktop search or from a, a mobile um, search on, on, on Chrome or on Firefox or Safari on a device. And um, also one really important part is uh, if you are on, on the top positions, you have to make sure that you know how your icon is designed, you have to know what screenshots you are using, if you are using a video preview or not. Compared to the, the, the main rankings, um, the main ranking factors, you can divide them in two areas. So the one area are the on-page factors where you definitely can change it on your own. So you are the developer of an app, you can go into uh, iTunes Connect or to the Google Developer Console and you can change it. And then you have the off-page factors where I would say it's not that easy to change it. So it's definitely something where you have to spend money to buy ads, to buy uh, traffic, to generate downloads and installs. And if you have a look on the um, Google, Google Play description, um, description page, then you see the red marked um, criteria. So these are the main criteria you are focusing on the on-page side of an app for Google Play. And all of these um, criteria, I will describe you what to do there and, and how to improve them. Here you see the iTunes criteria, so it's a um, iTunes app description page. Uh, you see, like, like for Google Play, the, the, the icon, the description, um, the publisher name, the name of the app, and the screenshots. But before starting to optimize an app, you have to start to think about your keyword strategy. So, the keyword strategy is, in our opinion, the, the, the key to succeed um, because just if you know which keywords you want to target, you know for which keywords you should optimize. So um, what question you should ask yourself when, you're, um, when you think of, of a keyword strategy? So um, the main focus is definitely to, to look on your, on your audience, to look on your target group. So we are optimizing for parents, so we have to think about how the parents would search for a specific app a specific game for their babies, the toddlers, kids, preschoolers, whatever. <laughs> and what are the parents exactly looking for? So are, are they just looking for, for kids app, kids game? Are they really looking for educational TV, for an ABC app, a puzzle app, a color app, whatever? And are there synonyms? So synonyms regarding, um, or maybe short, short descriptions like toddlers and tots, um, kids, children, and um, how to deal with singular and plural. There are a lot of apps you can use to get an idea how the search behavior is in a specific country. Um, so regarding international keyword strategies and localization, I will come um, later on on the slide to this topic because it's also a really important topic um, to, to make sure that you have the same benefit optimizing an app for different languages in different countries. But uh, for us, when we start to think about a keyword strategy, uh, we start to brainstorm. 
So we sit with the client or sit with the developed team um, and think about what they would search for if they would search for an app like theirs for, for their kids. Then you can have an analysis of your competitors. So what are the keywords your competitors are targeting and which are, which are your competitors? I mean, uh, we are, when we are looking on, on puzzle apps or ABC apps, um, educational apps, there are a lot of similar apps and we definitely can have a look what have they done the last years and I'm for sure that they also have done a cure strategy in the beginning or they are still developing it. Um, then what we often use for, for SEO, for search engine optimization and desktop search, but we can also adapt it to the mobile search is um, that we are using Google Trends. So we check what, what trending topics are there, so which kind of keywords are there people looking for. Maybe there is coming a bigger, newer ad and they name it in a different way and that the people are done maybe searching for this, for this, for this keyword. So, you have to make sure that you know um, which trending topics are there for a specific app, and um, you can use the Google Keyword Planner to have a purization of different keywords. So sure, it's, it's not the same search like on, on, on an app store or on a mobile device, but it still gives you an understanding what is more important and what's less important. Um, then you can use Google Suggest um, for the Play Store, so if you start typing uh, a keyword, you get suggestions, and this is also a good idea to have in, um, have in mind what are maybe different keywords or synonyms people are looking for. For example, if you are looking for ABC, ABC game, then you often see two years old, preschool, preschoolers, one, two, three years, and so on. Then you have a really, a really good tool you can, um, you can use nowadays, so they are developing the app. Um, app Store optimization tool uh, for the last month and weeks. It's a similar web, um, and they can definitely see where a competitor is getting traffic. So are they getting traffic from the App Stores? Are they getting traffic from Facebook, from, from organic search, and so on? And uh, last but not uh, least is, is uh, ASO tools. So you can use special tools concentrating just on App Stores, or on the optimization, um, like at any app tweak, sensor tower, or search, search man. And um, these tools definitely give you a good understanding on, on, on what phrases you should focus on and how difficult a phrase is regarding um, the downloads of the all apps, regarding um, the number of apps for a specific uh, search phrase. If you have a look on, on Google AdWords, and you check specific keywords, you see um, how high the search volume is. So this search volume is not based on mobile searches, it's based on desktop searches, but you still get a feeling how the people look and search for specific search phrases. Another possibility is to use app store optimization tools. You can use uh, sensor tower to discover new keywords to check the keywords of your competitors. You can use Searchman. Here, for example, Google Suggest, if you type in kids, you see it directly, kids games, kids doodle, books, or if you look for alphabet, alphabet for kids, and so on. But this is just one part of the keyword strategy. So if you focus, if you are focusing not just on, on the English speaking or Spanish speaking market, and you try to, to internationalize in whole Europe, you have to, to work with all the languages we have here. So um, the French people definitely look different and search different than the Germans do, the Polish search different than the UK guys do. And this is what, what we saw in the past by working with clients. They had, first they had just a translation of the English keywords and they haven't worked with native speakers. So they just translated it by a translation agency and they translated it in a proper way, but it was not the, 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 the keyword or the search phrase that people were searching in their country. And it's really, really important to also to, to, um, to improve the rankings in different languages and in different countries to adjust your app name, for example, adjust the images, um, the screenshots, maybe also the, the icon. So as we, we saw in a previous presentation that in Japan you should have a panda as an icon because that's working really good. Um, 
And you also should use, if you have a website, um, you should use the local badges. So this is what iTunes and or Apple and, and Google provides you, so, so use it. Um, on the right side, you see um, a case study of us. So we, um, we've done an, a localization with a client and uh, we could increase the number of rankings um, for a lot of countries in, in iTunes by 100% and for Google Play by 27%. And this is definitely working when you, when you try to localize. One of the most important criteria is the app name. So you have to make sure that it's short, it's not too long. Uh, you have limitations for Android, so you are just allowed to use 30 characters. For iTunes, you are allowed to use 255, but I would say to use 255, it looks like keyword spam, and it's not, not really uh, sustainable. And our recommendation would be if you have a, a, an app and it's really a brand and you want to make sure that this app is recognized by this brand, then we would recommend to have the brand name followed by the main keyword, and that's the app you should focus on, or the app name you should focus on. The second um, really important criteria regarding iTunes is the keyword field. So the keyword field is one of the main factors for iTunes, um, so they are not considering um, the, the description like Google Play is doing it. Um, so the problem is iTunes is not a search engine, so they are not that good in search like Google is. So they offer the developers the keyword field, you can use it by 100 characters. And we see two examples. So in the, um, in the um, up example, there are a lot of keywords which are not fitting to an app. So um, if, you, if you check the keywords, nobody would really looking for it. But if you, you have a look on the second example, then you see, okay, it's a puzzle game about animals, about zoo, learning, it's for kids, toddlers, preschoolers, four to seven years. And um, this is how a keyword field should look like. So try not to use the longest phrases you have. Don't use any spaces. Try to avoid variations of singular and plural. And also um, don't use double case. So try to have at least, I would say, 95 to 100 characters used for each app. Um, so I think to get 100 is really hard. So um, we are mainly dealing with 95 to 100 characters. But if you can do 100, then it's definitely a plus and, and try to use the space you have. So let's come to the description. Um, the description is really important for Google Play um, and it, regarding the ranking. And for iTunes, it's more to convince a potential customer or a user to download the app. Um, so try to describe what is the functionality of the app. Um, what are the, the advantages? Um, what specific features you have, and maybe also compared to the, the competitors, so what extra features you have the competitors may maybe not providing. And also use your, your corporate communication. So include your website, your Facebook channel, if you have a YouTube channel, include it in the, in the, in the bottom of the, of the description page. Regarding the description page for, for Google Play, that's a really important criteria for um, for getting rankings and also to, to get Google, the Google uh, Play algorithm to understand what your app is for. Um, so make sure your, your, your description is unique, that, uh, that the benefit is, um, of a unique description is definitely that you can get better rankings on the desktop search. So this is why we would not use the same descriptions for several app stores. And try to use the most important features of your app in the first three lines. because. Um, if you, if you have the app description online, um, you will see that they, or Google don't display everything. So the same for iTunes. So make sure the most important message is in the upper, um, upper area of your description. And also create lists and bullet points. Um, you, the, the benefit of, of Google Play is that you can use HTML. So you can use um, special characters. You can use a bold. You can also uh, use, use color text, but it's just supported on mobile devices. So it's not supported when someone is um, um, coming from the desktop on the Google Play, but if someone is searching on the mobile device, you can highlight text in pink and red and blue, whatever you want. Here's an example for a good formatted description. So you see that it's really good readable. Um, you have stars as special characters, uh, uh, then you have um, bullet points, you have um, 
a defined area for all the functionalities. In the other front, you have the, the most benefit and the most important um, points of the description. So this is how a description should look like if you want to get attention within the Google um, Play Store. Um, regarding the Google Play Store, you can also use uh, update text. So if you, every time if you publish a new version and you have fixed bugs, then you can say either you say small fixes or you say what you fixed and what new functionalities you have, and also try to to include a call to action. So write, test our new functionalities, have a look on our new characters, whatever. Let's come to the app icon. So the app icon, it's the first touch point of an app within the search result page on a mobile device. So make sure you have a different icon than your competitors have, but not in a, in a bad way, in a better way. So make sure it's simple. Uh, don't include any words. So nobody wants words in an app um, icon. Don't use um, glass. And also make sure that your design of the icon fits to design of the app so that the people recognize your icon within the app design. I would say it's not easy to find a perfect um, app icon, but you definitely can have tests before you launch. Um, so buy traffic or, get, or drive traffic from one, one of your existing apps to a, uh, to a different, uh, different uh, frame where you, you, where you have several icons, and then you can see which of the icons gets the best click-through rate. You can change it, you can change the color, you can change the, the character on, on the icon. Um, you can arrange the elements in a different way and, and try to test it and see what works best for you. And I'm sure this app icon would also work works best for you within, um, within the, uh, the iTunes store or the Google Play store. So nowadays, uh, you have already a possibility to, to use um, Apple Analytics, so that's definitely a, a good, um, a good um, next step to improve app store optimization and also to improve um, how to optimize an app. And also Google will launch a, a retesting tool in, the, in a couple of weeks so that you can use and check how your app um, or how your app installs will change when you uh, decrease the price or when you change the app name, when you change the screenshots, when you change the app, the app icon. Let's come to the screenshots. Um, so next, next to the app icon and the description, the screenshots are really important because nobody will really read them at the description. So mainly they, they watch on the like, screenshots first and they click through the screenshot and maybe then they will <coughs> read the description if they are still interested. And um, the screenshot is the first, um, first touching point when, when you are on a description page. And try to keep it simple. Try to show the functionalities, the main functionalities of an app. And try also to um, not to use uh, marketing slogans, not to use device frames. Um, and also don't use iPad or iPhone screenshots in Google Play and the other way around. So this is sometimes what we see when, when, when you see that someone has first, first the, the icons app and then they port, port it to Google Play and they still use the same screenshots. And also try to, to tell a story through the screenshot. So the main screenshot is the most important screenshot, but try to tell a story from the first screenshot to the last one. Um, and also use all possibilities you have. So um, for iTunes, you can use different sizes for different um, screens and iPhones. And also for, um, for Google Play, you can use different screenshots for, for tablet than for, for um, from a smartphone or also for, for Google, Google TV. So make sure you use all the possibilities you have. Um, and for example, here you see, Number front, it's, it's uh, a device frame, so it's not a whole device frame, but you have still a notification bar. On this screenshots, you don't really see the functionality of the app, so it's really uh, overloaded, and um, it's, I would say it's not um, attracting someone to download the app. So next to the screenshots, you can also use a video preview, so you can use it for Google Play a long time. You have 30 seconds to two minutes. It's a, it's a YouTube link. You have to include your new dev developer console. 
and um, then you have iTunes where you can now since uh, iOS 8 where you can have a um, video preview for your app but it's just triggered on iOS um, devices so if you have it and if you are surfing on an iOS 7 device um, the, 7, um, the, 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 the iOS 7 will not see it but nevertheless use it because it gives the parents or the user a better understanding of how, how your app is working and what's the benefit is uh, when, they, when they use your app. So this were mainly the on-page factors. So this is something you can definitely change directly and you don't need to spend a lot of money. But when we talk about reviews, it's really hard to get good reviews, but it's also really hard to get rid of bad reviews. But um, we see reviews as a perfect proxy for your product. So um, you should monitor your rankings, um, sorry, your, your reviews, and you also have to check what, what, what your, your potential um, or your customers, your users are, are telling you by re reviewing the app. So if you see that they are asking for a special feature or if you see they have problems with um, this for subscription to cancel it or whatever, try to make sure that you implement this functionality or, or, or fix this bug in, in one of the later releases. And um, try to, to, to avoid negative, um, negative reviews because um, you see from studies that reviews are a really, really important criteria and um, when you check the, the results of the top 20 um, apps in each category, then you see they have an average review, uh, average, um, review star of four to five. So make sure that you don't get bad rankings and if you, if you want to start a new app and you, you are not sure if it's working properly, then maybe start it with a soft launch in a, in, a, in a country where you're not focusing on. So it wouldn't be, I would not recommend to start directly with the app in the, the US market or in the German market. Maybe you first start in, in, I don't know, maybe Spain or Sweden or something like this where you know, okay, the market is not that important for you, but you definitely can check how uh, people react on your app and what bugs are still there. So here's a, um, here's a study from uh, Sensor Tower where they analyzed uh, 126, 162,000 apps and they um, checked how many ratings you need and, and what, what the average rating you should have to get a good ranking. And you see that apps on the first positions definitely have good, good average rating and reviews, a lot of reviews, so you have definitely to focus on, on reviews and make sure that, that they are good and, and not, not a lot of bad one or two star reviews. Yes, for example, in, um, there was a really good article of Tom from Google and um, Vuga is really working on the reviews and checking what are um, what reviews they get and what what the main keywords in the review text is. So if they see a crash or a bug, then they try to fix it at, as soon as possible. If they see someone is asking for a new feature, then they may maybe put it on their roadmap. So this definitely helps you to understand what what potential um, or what your current audience and your current target group is is looking for. So the next step, what we would recommend if, if you want to, to um, increase your rankings or increase your audience, also try to have different app stores. Um, so sure, iTunes and, and Google, uh, Google Play are the main, um, are the main actors on, on the mobile devices, but next to this, you definitely have Amazon, um, really big with the Kindle tablet. Then you have a lot of Samsung devices. Um, you can also use a lot of marketplace in in China so I think they have now 23 different app stores in Russia Yandex is really big um, so try to have or try to publish your app not just on the main um, marketplaces or app stores try to, to publish them also on, on the niche, niche 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 ones because there are few apps so less competition and maybe you can convince someone who is um, there and, and looking for kids apps they may be will get a potential, a potential new user, maybe they will subscribe um, on your website or will like your Facebook channel, whatever. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>